Boxing King Media in association with Box Row. Frank Smith, um, we're going to have to start with that shirt because that is loud as hell. Explain that because people are going to be wondering what is going on there. We're in Florida, mate. We're in Florida. The silk shirt's out, hanging on to every bit of chubbiness I've got. Um, I'm, at, I'm actually going to play golf. <laughs> going to play golf, mate. Why is it when people play golf they wear loud clothes? I don't play golf, but I notice that. Because if you're terrible at playing golf, you, at least the least you can do is look a bit wild. Oh, okay, fair you point. Know, that's the way I look at it. Fair point. Um, let's jump into it. We, I think the biggest talking point about this whole event, even though we've got a brilliant main event, we've got Sandy Ryan in an undisputed fight. The whole the attention's been on Conor Ben. Um, he's carrying a lot of weight on his shoulders, and obviously you're kind of tangled into this because you know because uh, your relationship with the Eubank family how are you finding it all and how do you think he's going to deal with uh, tomorrow night yeah look firstly I would like to say like you said a tremendous show um, you know even before Connor was added you know Richard Hitchens have paid a brilliant fight real 50-50 fight and you know Hitchens we believe has got a massive future um, Sandy Ryan and Jessica McCaskill another brilliant fight the winner of that goes on to some huge fights 24 and uh, Ammo Williams with a step up against Steve Rolls as well you know he needs these kind of experienced fights because he's not far off from challenging for a world title especially with his sort of personality in the 160 division there's not a ton of options out there and you know I don't think he I think 2024 he'll get a chance um, look Conor Ben uh, and the whole situation look no one's been through more pressure and stress than Conor Ben in this whole situation. You know, we've all been a part of the journey, but no one's been through anything like he's been through. Um, I think the key for this fight was to, you know, take away a lot of pressure in the build-up because, you know, if he was going into a massive fight, like a Eubank fight or one of those big names, you know, imagine what the pressure would be like on the fight itself, plus all of this. So it's actually quite good to deal with this now. Um, and, you know, it's, uh, you know, look, it, it's, it's non-stop, isn't it? It's non-stop, especially from the British Boxing Board and Control's perspective. I've never seen them deal, deal with anything like this, but so be it. Do you think they've ever had anything like this to deal with, though, in, in their defence? Yeah, tons of things. Tons of things. Um, but... They've they've never seemed to they've never seemed to be so outspoken about something. You know, you never hear Robert Smith talking anywhere else but talks well on his mate show. You know, and that's not like I, I've had a great relationship with Robert Smith over the years. I completely disagree with the way he's dealt with this whole thing. Um, and but you know, it's uh, it's one of those things, isn't it? It's one of those things. Just looking as an outsider, because ultimately, when you guys put shows on, you put money in the British Boxing Board's pockets. When I see you guys together at events, I see you guys talking to each other amicably. Uh, all these interviews, does these conversations not happen face to face? Do you guys not just talk to each other and say, like, listen, you need to do this and you need to do that? Because ultimately, if you guys didn't put shows on, the British Boxing Board, in my, in my opinion, I'm guessing they won't survive. Yeah, well, look, we're probably the biggest supplier of funds to the British Boxing Board control through the shows we operate. Um, and look, we, we want, we want the, the sport to be as safe as possible and I believe that on, on multiple levels the British Boxing Board of Control do a tremendous job. Um, and, you know, look, we have many arguments uh, over the years around, around a range of different things. We try not to let one, one thing get in the middle of you know, another situation, if you know what I'm saying. So not let the Conor Ben situation cause issues anywhere else. Um, I think, I, I, I think they, I think he's gone so far with it now and they've gone so far with it now that they can't really turn back and that's, the, that's their problem. But, you know, when you've got a body who, so whether people accept or not that Conor Ben dealt with the situation with the WBC, whether they accept that or not, right, let's park that separately. Then they said, deal with UCAD, right? So he went down the route and dealt with UCAD via the National Anti-Doping Panel, which is the body who are in charge of all of these issues, right? They made a decision. So he was cleared. Whether people want to hear that or not, that was, that's the truth. And now the board, UCAD, are saying, no, we're not happy with that. Where does it stop? Like, even in his interview yesterday, or the day before, Robert Smith, he goes... Oh, if he wins the appeal, then maybe we'll have to see what happens from there. No, 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 no. It's not how it works. You can't point to someone and go, they're in charge. They make a decision. We don't agree with it. Let's, let's ask them to try again. Again, an appeal, 90% of the time, 95% of the time, in, in a number of legal cases, always goes the same way. Maybe even higher. I don't know. I'm not a lawyer, but let's be honest. Um, so he wins the appeal. 
but you still not, you still don't want him to fight. And that's basically the messaging of yesterday, or the day before, whenever the interview was. It's terrible. It's terrible. Like they're treating him like they've not they, like in a way they've never treated anyone else. And that is my opinion, and I believe that. But it's quite a deep question. I'm not going to accuse the British Boxing Board of anything here, but obviously we've seen there's going to be a documentary coming out later on tonight. Um, do you think there could be an element of that? Because that's what uh, Ian John Lewis has um, suggested in this documentary that's coming out tonight. Uh, you know, it's talking about the British Boxing Board being involved in racism, sexism, Islamophobia, all that sort of stuff. Uh, it's the kind of stuff I, you know, I've heard over the years before, but there's never any proof for it, so I'm not going to accuse them of it. But do you think there could be an element of that? Look, I, I'm the same as you, where you said there. I'm not going to comment on something without having understanding and proof. Um, I do, I do believe, and this is my honest opinion. There's a lot of improvements that can be made with the British Boxing Board of Control. I believe it. You know, I believe it hasn't changed in a number of years. Uh, I, I do believe it's not always willing to listen to uh, improvements. Is my personal opinion. But like I said before, they do a very good job on a number of things. But at the same time, these, you know, these accusations, they're not good. They're not good for the sport in any way. I'm not going to sit here and say I agree or disagree with them because, like you say, without seeing proof or understanding, um, I don't want to jump into that. But it's not a good sign that multiple people are saying this. Maybe Obviously, we can only comment on it after seeing this documented tonight. If, if we can somehow see it in the States, see, see what kind of evidence there is on there. Um, the, the last thing I want to speak to you about, uh, Frank, is you know your relationship with, uh, well, not your relationship, but all, all the interviews I've seen recently uh, about yourself speaking about Ben Shalom. And I think we sort of touched on it at Matchroom HQ. Um, I just want to talk about that. Obviously, it seems like the relationship is kind of broken. Um, do, but Ben, as I, and I've seen a lot of the quotes that people have been quoting, you're saying Ben Shalom ain't going to survive long and you know, he doesn't know what he's doing, all that sort of stuff. But I, to my understanding, I think he's under 30. Do you rate him for what he's done, being under 30 and bringing Boxer to where he's brought him and got himself like a Sky Sports contract? Look, I rate him for what he's done. I rate him for what he's delivered. Of course, at that age, I don't rate the way he operates. I don't appreciate the way he operates. I'm a very straight person, right? If you deal with me, if you deal with me and can have a conversation with me, and we're all cordial. Like, there's a number of people I don't get on with, but I'll, I'll speak cordially with, and I won't say a bad word about, right? Because, you know, I, I don't. What I don't agree with with Ben Shalom is he lies. He tells multiple lies. He goes behind people's back, and he's slimy. That's the reality. So whether you know people think that's me going out of my way, it's not. I just tell the truth. You know, so the relationship, the relationship was never going to be, we were never going to be best of friends. But they're my honest opinions on it. I'm not, I'm not a liar. You ask anyone in this sport, I'm probably the most honest person there is, and it's probably to the detriment of me in reality, in, in a number of things. But I am. He's a, he's a liar, and that is my biggest thing. And he does a number of things which are underhand and slimy. Just on that point, you know, again, I'm trying to look at it as a neutral body here. Uh, if if he had them characteristics, I'm just curious, like, because when that Sky contract was available for any promoter in the country, there was a lot of established small hold promoters, but he kind of come out the blue out of nowhere. How did he manage to secure that? Just that curiosity, because surely these sort of things would have been about before. Haven't got a clue. Haven't got a clue. And like I say, I'm not taking anything. Like you say, he's under 30. I commend him for what he's done to get into that position. Right, well done. Like, so I'm not saying anything detrimentally in that way. Well done. But when it comes to the way you operate, you know, I don't appreciate the way he operates. That's just my opinion. You don't have to listen to me. You don't have to believe me. But ask a number of people. Look, a number of people in this sport have to protect their relationships with people. They're going to they're gonna accept some of the things he does. I don't have to. I don't have to have a relationship with him. I can sit. I could sit down with anyone, right, who said anything about me, have a conversation. I've, had, I've fallen out with multiple people, right? I still sit there and can have a conversation with them. I can sit there and have a conversation with him, you know, but he's like, he's on another level and I don't appreciate sliminess and lies and I will always call it out and I don't appreciate when you give this big talk about being there for the fighters and you're not. Like, just be honest. Be honest. It's the easiest way to be. Maybe I'm lucky because I've worked at a business where I've never had to lie. You know, we've. I'm lucky. I haven't, I haven't built a business and, you know, and uh, started from nothing, but I've, I've done a good job, I think, for my age, you know, uh, and, but yeah, I, that, that's my view, and again, people say, stop talking about him again, 
you asked me a question about him, which I gave you well, my honesty. Well, I'm trying to go in at a different angle. I'm trying to cover bits that people may not have covered before. Mm. And um, obviously, for me as an outsider, I sometimes just think maybe because you guys are direct competition with each other, there's going to be back it's and forward. Bad. You've never heard me say, I'd never say, I've never said a bad word about George Warren, for example. Not George, but definitely Frank. Frank, yeah. Because again, Frank will say something like, Frank says, I'm a little fat boy or I'm a tea boy. Like, yeah. So it's all a bit of fun. Like, I don't, but I don't lose sleep. Like, I'm not honestly not bothered, but I've never, you know, I've never said who else have I never said. I've worked with Caller and Nissa Sowland for he 15, works with everyone for 15 years. Yeah, yeah. but he's like, what, why I'm, is he I'm, why I'm, is he able I'm, to work with everyone? Because he understands the business and he's he's straight. He just wants to do good business. Does that mean Caller's the most straightest person in boxing? Because I asked him this ages ago. Because it, it's mad that how he works with you, Ben, and the Warrens, but all the rest of you three can't work with each other. No, but we can, like, we did a deal with with the Warrens, but, you know, John Ryder, Zach Parker, for it's example. It's recent, though, isn't it? Huh? It's all recent. Yeah, no, but that's good. Yeah. That's that's where I'm saying there's improvements. Again, uh, Golden Boy. You know, I speak to Eric Gomez very often, have a good relationship with him. I met him when I was in LA. Um, top rank, have a great relationship with Brad Jacobs and Carl Moretti. You know, like, we... we we work with people. We deliver fights with people. We have good relationships. I've never heard it said a bad word about any of those. Never. You know. So like, it's not me just going out of my way. I'm not. I've never said a bad word about George. If George Warren, if Frank Warren said, oh, "I'm stopping tomorrow," and it's all George Warren, I think it would be better because we've shown that we can talk and have a relationship. Probably because we're a similar age as well. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm not sitting here making up shit about George Warren, for example, if you get what I'm saying, because it's not what I'm here to do. Um, it's interesting because from our point of view, content creation-wise, we kind of get along with everyone. And I will uh, commend George Warren. He's like probably one of the nicest straight-up people I've met in boxing. And that doesn't mean the rest aren't. I ain't got any issues with anyone. But I won't go into any further. Um, it's obviously your opinion. I'll let you stick by it and uh, see what the fans decide. Uh, anything else you want to add before I let you go, Frank? Don't miss the show. We talk about a lot about problems in the sport and, and issues, but we've got a great show Saturday night with some great talent all the way throughout and the before the bell segment of the show. You know, you saw some of the, you know, the the, uh, the spite between them there in that way. In but um, yeah, don't miss the show. It's a great one live on the zone. Good luck with the golf. Thank yeah. you.